Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're doing, I think, like my biggest empties video ever. I literally had to like, because I, I have a drawer, right, in like underneath my desk area where I keep all of my empties, and it was literally overflowing. <laughs> So I was like, it's time for an empties video. And I was pulling everything out. Like, I, I really think this is the most empties I've ever had in a single one of these videos. So this is probably going to be an extra long video. I'm looking at the clock. I have about an hour to film before I have to start working. I'm working from home today. And I honestly don't know if I'm going to get through all of these. <laughs> so apologies in advance if I have to, like, cut and, like, continue filming this at another time or on another day. Because <laughs> literally, like the sephora bag is packed jam-packed of products and there's a lot of makeup there's a lot of hair care there's a lot of skin care like i got through a lot over the past like what two months ish so get a snack get a drink relax sit with me and talk about my beauty trash okay so i finally have everything organized i should probably do this before filming but live and learn my smallest depart department my smallest section, I think, is hair care. So we're going to start with that, and then I'm going to move over into skincare. So the first empty I have is this big um, mambo jumbo mama jamma. This week has felt like a year. I'll just say that now. This is the Diva Curl Melt Into Moisture Matcha Butter Conditioning Mask, and it's... Uh, it's so good. Honestly, this is an amazing deep conditioner. It smells... Okay, so people's main complaint is the smell. I actually really like the smell. It smells kind of like Play-Doh. I like that. I think it's nice. I love the texture. It's thick and goopy, but it really covers each strand and gets in there. And whenever I use this, I end up with like the... I didn't use it for here, so I don't know why I'm pointing at my hair. But I get like the plumpest curls ever. The downside is that everything from Diva Curl is so expensive and I personally like I'm a bit upset that I have to pay extra for like good hair care just because I have curly hair. That's a sidebar though so I've been working to like dupe this so far. I found a few other deep conditioners that work really well for like less than half the price but they don't do exactly what this does so I know moving forward I'm gonna come back to this every now and then but I don't need to keep purchasing it especially because this size of it is ridiculously expensive i do my best to just buy all of these from ulta because ulta you know you actually get cash back you can get those points so i would only recommend buying diva curl from ulta so you can use that rewards program this is way too expensive though <laughs> that being said it did last me a decent amount of time i think i got at least like eight deep conditioning treatments out of this i'd have to do the math and figure out like what the price per treatment was right here but it's pricey it's pricey, but it's a great deep conditioner. So I am still on the lookout to find a exact dupe for this, which I don't think I'm going to find an exact dupe, but I found other deep conditioners that work really well for me, including this next one. This empty is from Cantu, and this is the Shea Butter Leave-In Conditioning Repair Cream. So this nice sized jug of product, I got at Target, and I'm pretty sure it was around $10, which is a fraction of the Diva Curl price. It smells divine. What does it smell like? Yeah, it smells like shea butter. It smells like shea butter. Duh, Monica. That's why it's called the shea butter leave-in conditioner trick. But this deep conditioner worked really well. I didn't get the exact same results as I did with the Diva Curl, but I got some great results. And the fact that it comes in a big jug like this, and it's affordable, and you can use coupons, and it works well, and it smells great... I'm definitely gonna buy this again. So I'm actually gonna take a picture of this and the next time I'm at Target, I'm gonna look for this again and pick it up. Cause I'm just about done with my other deep conditioning treatments and I had like a stock <laughs> stock of them cause I was testing out a whole bunch to find a dupe for the Diva Curl. But um, this is really good. It's one of my favorites, definitely my favorite Cantu product that I've ever tried. So if you're looking for a good affordable deep conditioning treatment, I would say the Cantu. All right, so let's go into makeup removal first and then we'll go into skincare. So I have two of these empties. These are from Neutrogena. These are the oral free eye makeup removers. So this used to be my favorite eye makeup remover because I wear a lot of heavy eye makeup. I wear liner, I wear mascara, like eye makeup is my favorite part so I tend to go ham even on a daily basis 
on my eye makeup. So I needed something strong and effective to take it off and this used to be my go-to but I just purchased a product that I'm using now. It's a micellar water and I think it's from CeraVe. I'll, I'll double check when I'm back in the bathroom but I'm still using that product but that has surpassed this. <laughs> so while it was really good I do think it this gets a bit pricey because the bottles are kind of small. I think this is the biggest size you can get it in and this is 5.5 fluid ounces. And depending on where you buy it, the price varies madly. Like it can go from like $2.50 or $3 a bottle to like $6 a bottle, depending on where you're picking this up. So it was really good for the time, but I found something that works better and it's a lot cheaper. So I'm probably not going to pick this up again. My next empty has been my go-to way to remove the rest of my face makeup. So I definitely have to use a micellar water or, um, you know, eye makeup remover for my eyes. But for the rest of my face, I've actually been using this from Physicians Formula. This is the Perfect Matcha 3-in-1 Melting Cleansing Balm. And this is actually so good. It's not the most affordable, but... What I was looking for was something that would work as good as the Clinique Take the Day Off Cleansing Balm. I used to love that, but I couldn't afford to keep buying that, especially because you go through the Clinique so quickly. One thing I really like about this Physician's Formula one is that a little bit of the product goes a long way, which is what is missing from the Clinique. The Clinique, you had to take like a handful and work it in and work it in your skin to actually get the makeup off. This I can use. They come with a little um, scoopy majig. <laughs> They come with a little scoopy. So if you use this little scoopy and get out product on here, that's enough for your face. I don't have to like dig in and keep using and, you know, use the majority of the container just for one use. I can actually like use the recommended amount and it works. So that for me makes this really worth it. Because even though this is between like $12 and $16, depending on where you can find it, I think it's worth the price. I have another one that is open that I'm currently using right now and it's just been working really well. That The only thing is that you really can't use it for eye makeup. I've tried using it for eye makeup and it just doesn't remove it and you get like that film over your eyes that kind of scares me. So don't use it for eye makeup but for face makeup it's really good. Okay getting into skincare proper I have an empty from CeraVe. I talked about this in my last empties video. This is their skin renewing vitamin C serum. So I love this serum and this morning I actually finished it up. It's completely empty. The only downside I'm seeing of this is that this varies widely in price depending on where you buy it and I've been trying to rebuy and stock up on this for the past like two weeks and it's sold out most places I would get it so I like to buy this at CVS it's around $18 there and you can use coupons and use your extra bucks which I have an extra bucks coupon that I want to use but I've gone to like three CVS's and it's been sold out everywhere so I went to Target, and it also was sold out at Target, but I noticed at Target, it's $25, which is like, what? And then I was like, oh, let me look at Ulta. Ulta probably has it. So I looked online at Ulta, and it's also $25, <laughs> which to me is a bit much, which I know it's like a six, eight, can I do math? It's like a six to seven dollar difference, but I would prefer to get this at CVS with the discount and with coupons I can use. So... That's the downside is that I haven't been able to rebuy this yet. So currently I don't have one of these, which is, mm. so I'll let you know how the, you know, I can actually find this again. I think it's because this is a new product um, and that may be why they're selling out fairly quickly, but I, I need to find this again. And the next time I see this, I'm probably gonna pick up at least like two or three of them because this lasts me around a month and a half of daily use. I use this only in the morning. The next product I have is actually a sample from Laneige. This is the Sleeping Care Water Sleeping Mask. Um, and I just had a little sample. It lasted me like three or four days. I really didn't like this. It's really, 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 really thin. So maybe good for people with oily skin, but I would put this on and less than 10 minutes later, my skin would feel dry. So, uh, I mean, uh, seeing how expensive the actual full-size product is and everything else like no <laughs> so this was just a no next i have a product i actually really like but i don't know if i would ever buy the full size because it's kind of pricey just for like a chapstick and this is from fresh this is the sugar advanced therapy lip treatment and this was a point perk at sephora i think like around 100 points um but it was a really good lip balm 
I used to, I like to keep a lip balm on my night side table and just put it on every night before I go to bed and then every morning when I wake up after I do my skincare routine and before I do my makeup. And like I said, it was really good. This actually, this sample, not sample, but like this rewards point size lasted me a good few months of daily use before it ran out. But I think the full sizes of these are like over $20, which yeah, yeah it'll last you a long time, but $20 for a chapstick. I'm just gonna buy my chapstick. I like to use the Blistex um, chapstick tube, so I'll use that instead. But like, if given the opportunity to get like another rewards point or to get like a free sample of this, I would do that, but I'm not gonna buy this. All right, the next two products are both from The Ordinary and I've talked in depth about them in my previous empties videos. These are a staple of my current skincare routine, both AM and PM. So this, the first one is the Caffeine Solution 5%. I've been using this both AM and PM just around my eyes and it deep puffs and it just feels so good and I really, really enjoy this product. This is like my second or third bottle and I have two backups and I'm, I got one open right now, so <laughs> I'm good on this one. The next one is a product I've been using non-stop for, you know, over a year and a half at this point and it's been doing wonders for my skin. It's the 100% organic cold press rose hip seed oil. I can't even count how many bottles of this I've gone through. I have another one open that I'm using right now and I've got multiple backups because this is just so good. It's so affordable. Both of these products are around $8 for a bottle and the bottle lasts you at least like two months. So, it's really good. The only reason I buy in bulk for these is because you can only, well for me, I can only get them online. So when I place an online order, it's just a little bit easier and it works a bit better if I pick up like two or three bottles at a time as opposed to just getting like one and then waiting and then one. Okay, my last skincare product, and this is the Mario Badescu Facial Spray with Aloe, Chamomile, and Lavender. I use this in my skincare routine right before I put on moisturizer. I honestly can't tell if it really does anything. I feel a bit more moisturized and I like the smell and I like the step and this is like like an eight dollar bottle that lasted me like two and a half months so i like it i have another one downstairs right now um because i got them on sale at ulta a while ago and that's a rose scented one and i have to say i like the rose one better than this one but that's just because i like the scent of rose i like it but i can't really say if it actually does anything skincare wise i just like it Okay, so that's it for skincare. Next, I'm gonna go into like a random product before I go into fragrance, because I actually have three fragrance empties this time. My random product is from z -Quil, and this is the Pure Z's De-Stress and Sleep Melatonin and Ash... Ashwagandha? Ashwagandha. I think that's it. And it's supposed to help calm your mind and body. To, basically, it's a melatonin supplement for sleep. I actually like struggle a lot with sleeping. <laughs> I tend to take like the regular liquid z -Quil, but I saw these and I was kind of interested and intrigued. They do taste pretty good. They're like flavored uh, blackberry vanilla. So, I mean, they tasted pretty good. These did nothing to help me sleep at all. It was like a huge waste of money. I finished the bottle just because I was like, I got to make sure like maybe I'm just, it's a new thing. I need to keep trying it, you know, blah, blah, blah. But no, these did absolutely nothing. I would not recommend these at all. The only z -Quil I would recommend if you're having trouble sleeping is like the liquid normal regular z -Quil bottle, which is essentially just all the ingredients from NyQuil that make you sleepy. <laughs> so just get that liquid z -Quil and don't do like the gummies because even though they taste good and they're kind of fun, they don't help like at all. So for fragrance, I have the first empty is like my favorite go-to everyday perfume and this is from Avon. This is the Haiku Kyoto Flower, just basically the pink one. So they essentially have like three different versions of this perfume. There's a blue one, there's a pink one, and then there's a green one. So the pink one is more traditional cherry blossom flowery. The blue one is more light um, it reminds me a lot of the Dulce and Gabbana light blue perfume, if you've ever smelled of that. That's what the blue one is, and the green one, it's almost citrusy. I think there's a little bit left here. I can spray it. No, there's nothing left. But it's a bit more citrusy. It's a good in-between between like the really floweriness of the pink one and the really clean, light, scent of the blue one. I'm trying to get better at describing fragrances. Like I'm not really that great at it, but I'm, I'm doing my best here, guys. Personally, my preference is depending on the season. So like now that we're getting into winter, I probably lean more towards either the pink one or the green one. 
Whereas during the summer and like early spring, I actually really like the blue one. Um, so this perfume, the pink one, I go through this. If with everyday use, it takes me about two months to get through a full size of these. Um, these are around $20 and you normally get this and a lotion. So I think it's actually a really good deal for that. The green one, even though this is part of the green perfume line, this is actually a new product that came out and this is specifically for hair. It was actually a hair fragrance which intrigued me. I used it as a regular perfume too, so I would spritz it like here, here, and then kind of all over the head. <laughs> and it actually smelled really nice, and I really liked it. Um, I think this was way too expensive for what it was. It was more expensive than the perfume, just because it was new and because it was like a hair fragrance, so that's kind of BS. <laughs> but um, the actual scent is really nice, and I normally, so I don't actually buy from Avon, my grandma does. <laughs> Because one of her good family friends uh, is an Avon lady, so she sells Avon. So she she buys, like, monthly from her. Which, I don't, I mean, I'm not a huge supporter of MLMs. I can't say I'm a supporter of MLMs at all. But, you know, when your grandma buys you stuff and, like, gives it to you and you're just like, oh, yeah, I'm not gonna, like, throw it out. Like, I gotta use it, you know? That being said, educate yourself about MLMs. I'll throw some videos down in the description box. Anyway, I actually like the perfumes, but just be mindful. Last but not least, I have this, like, a uh, jumbo sample size of a fragrance from Clinique, and this is Clinique Happy. So this is a, a unique scent for me. Oh, there's a bit. So it's a very light, citrusy, but like not sweet kind of citrus. And I really liked this for the summer, and I recently had like just this much left in the bottle. I was like, you know, I need to start finishing up the little mini kind of bottles of fragrance that I have. So I finished it up. This is an actual perfume, whereas like a body, whereas like a body spray like this might not last all day. This is a last all day actual like perfume, so I'm probably gonna smell like this all day now. <laughs> that being said, it lasts a good long time, and I I got compliments when I wore this like constantly. All right, last and certainly not least, let's actually get into the makeup. Okay, let's first go through my priming slash setting sprays. I have a little mini here of the Scandinavia makeup primer spray. This worked like okay. It, it definitely wasn't like my go-to to reach for even among like affordable sprays for primers. For primers, like the only spray I will use is like the Smashbox priming water. I don't know why I like really like that one and I think it really works really well. But this one, I didn't really see a huge difference in like prolonging my makeup wear. I tended to use this with another primer. So I've never actually bought it. I always get the little minis whenever I buy it from Scandinavia because you can always get a sale and then they give you like two of these mini bottles with your regular bottle of setting spray. So I never, I would never buy this or recommend you buy it because uh, it, it doesn't really serve a purpose. Next, I have a little mini from Milani and this is the Make It Last setting spray. I love this setting spray and the sprayer of the normal size bottle. Now, this mini bottle, the sprayer was garbage, like to the point where I had to, like you see it's like messed up on the side, I had to take the spray, like the actual liquid out of this and put it in another bottle to use it. It is the same formula, it is the same setting spray, but the mini bottle, the setting spray nozzle sucks. <laughs> it was terrible. It would literally like almost ruin my makeup because it would spray out like a V. So like I would spray it and it would psh, like only right here would be sopping wet and nothing else would be touched. So <laughs> if you've got the choice, pick up the regular size bottle. It's actually a good setting spray. I really like it. I really recommend it. But the mini nozzle is trash. I <laughs> just don't. Let's go into some other primers next. I have my Cover Effects Mattifying Primer with, an with Anti-Acne Treatment. This is my go-to favorite primer for the summer. It's my favorite to use with the Peach Perfect Foundation for the summer because I sweat a lot. Summer is hot gross and with long commute that was like the combination that got me through this summer i am thankful to the gods that it is now fall finally like it's only november and like it just started feeling like fall so i don't have to use as many mattifying prom products i can now go for like glowy products or dewy products now and not look like disgusting <laughs> um but this is a really good primer i do think it's a bit pricey so um i think i would probably just pick up a mini for next summer but it is something i go back to whenever i have the opportunity every summer because it's just so bulletproof it was really good for my skin too next i have a primer from shop miss a this is the wonder skin perfecting pore primer and what was, it, what was it called perfecting blur primer so i actually cut it open just to get everything out so i kind of covered up the name 
this was a really good primer i compared it to the like the cover effects their original like uh, no 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 I misspoke. I compare this to the Smashbox, their original primer, which is actually a really good silicone primer. This one works just as well, and it's a dollar. <laughs> it does have little, like, gold flakes in it, so if you don't kind of like having that little bit of glowy with it, um, maybe stay away from this and try another one, but it is blurring. Like, it does blur your pores, and it does look really good and work really well under my favorite foundations. This technically counts as a primer and eye primer. This is from Makeup Revolution, and this is the Cut Crease Canvas. In name, it's supposed to be used for cut creases. I think it was just, like, meh for cut creases. I think this brush was Okay, so I have small eyes, so I think this brush was kind of big, but also you got way too much product on here. So I didn't really use it that often for cut creases, but as just a regular eyeshadow primer, it worked really well. <laughs> I did like it. Um, it is pretty affordable. I got this in the shade Illustrate, and then whenever it was getting empty, I did pop out the stopper, and I did scrape out everything that I could just to finish this up. So Illustrate was my closest shade match. I do have the white one, but I don't know um, how often I'm using like a, a completely white eye base for a look. So maybe that one I'll probably try using a bit more in actual cut crease looks. Okay, so this product I've had for like literally forever. Just finished it up and I really don't think it's worth the price. This is from Cover Effects and this is the Custom Cover Drops. I had the shade G20. This was back when I was first mixing foundations and I was looking for something to help add a little bit of gold to my foundations. But I really don't need this if I pick out a foundation that at least has my undertone. That way I just have to lighten it instead of having to make a whole foundation cocktail and adding like the warm undertone and then lightening it and then blah blah blah. So that's the one thing I'd recommend. If you're looking into foundations, even if you can't get a perfect shade match, just make sure you get your undertone because then you can just use an affordable white mixer to lighten it up and then you've got that. I have two foundation empties this time around and the first one is from Maybelline. This is the Fit Me Matte and Poreless foundation in what shade? 118. So this was too dark for me. I went and followed the under, um, undertone rule. This is the um, closest warm undertone. because so I went to all the lighter shades and none of them had a warm undertone. So 118 was my closest. I just used a white mixer to lighten it up. And this is such a good like medium coverage matte foundation that stays in place. Um, so I would say I have two matte go-to foundations and this is the drugstore version and the higher end version is from Too Faced, which I mentioned before. This is the Peach Perfect Comfort Matte Foundation. I still haven't found my perfect shade because it doesn't exist apparently, but I had the shade Shortbread, but I think this was, this was still too dark for me. I had to lighten it up, but it did have a warm undertone, so it was a bit easier for me to just work with. Okay, I thought I was gonna have time to finish this, but I literally, I have a meeting in like less than 10 minutes, so I have to jump onto that meeting. Um, I will come back either later today or tomorrow to go over the rest of the makeup. Hang tight. <laughs> One eternity later. Okay, that's a few hours later. Let's finish these empties. Lush. Let's finish these empties. Next, I have two of the same concealer, my concealer that has been my go-to for the entire summer. This is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Concealer and the shade that best matched me was, I think it was Ivory. I think light was too, I think actually light was too dark. I remember Ivory was the best one and I think this is the one I still have open. I have another one. I moved it back into my collection because I was kind of sick of using this concealer. Because I wanted to try some other things now that it's not blistering, disgustingly hot outside. <laughs> but this was my go-to. Bulletproof. It looked really nice. It didn't crease. And this is the spot where I tend to sweat. And that's kind of where the concealer meets the foundation for me. And so when I sweat there, it would break down and look horrible. Not with this concealer. That's basically the big running reason why I love this concealer so much is because it held up so well. Next, I have, finally, my review on the ColourPop Mascaras. I can't recommend these. Honestly, they were just like okay mascaras, but every time I wore these, I got like eye irritation and my eyes would water and I felt like itchy and I would have to constantly like, you know, when you pull on your eyelashes to get like clumps out? Constant. So it would look okay, it would apply nice, but like less than an hour later, irritation. I tried both the shades brown and black, but 
I can't recommend these. They weren't good. I didn't really enjoy them. I don't even think I used these for the full three months. I stopped using them earlier because of all that irritation. Next, I have two empties from Shop Miss A. This is the AOA Studio Perfect Setting Powder, which is now like my holy grail setting powder. I need to buy like four more of these so good. Amazing. With a variety of concealers that I have tried it with. Next, I have an empty of the Finishing Pressed Powder from Shop Miss A. I don't like this as much as the loose powder. Honestly, if you're you know, want to try one or the other, try the loose powder. But the pressed powder was still really good and it lasted a long time. And even after I repressed it, it still worked really well and I was able to use up the entire product. This one is kind of an empty because it dried out on me. This is the House of Lashes Mini Eyelash Adhesive. This is the only like lash glue that works for me. But I'm very lash impaired, so I can't really use it. It, it's difficult for me to apply lashes. This is the glue that makes it possible because <laughs> it's a really nice glue. It's really, um, st I mean, it's sticky and it keeps the lashes on all day, um, but it's also easy to apply. And you can tell really once it's dried down enough for you to actually put on. So I have another full size one that I'm going to begin using, but this was a mini. I forgot where I got this mini. It might have been a Sephora point or a, like a gift with purchase, but it I think it's because it's small that it dried out so quickly on me. But also I don't use it that often. So the, this is more of a me, my bad. Next I have an empty of, I need to think this is my first Super Shock empty or second. <laughs> this is the ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in Sailor. This used to be like my holy grail ColourPop shadow. It was just beautiful, um, but I think they discontinued this shade because when I last bought from ColourPop, I only saw the shade Frog, which is pretty similar, but not exactly the same because um, Frog has more like blue-green tints to it, whereas this was more like a neutral kind of tint to it. I still do like Frog. I have that one open. I've been using it fairly often, especially if you've seen any of my um, tutorials recently. But uh, yeah, I really liked Sailor. This is the second one that I believe I had, and uh, I'm going to mourn it but I'm glad I was able to actually finally use up a whole super strong shadow. Next to another couple of oops they dried out on me, which I'm surprised I didn't know these could really fully dry out. These are two Stila Glitter in Glows. I have the shades Gold Goddess and Perlina. I love both of these shades. They're great for all over the lid or for cut creases. Um, but I did take the stopper out and try to like use up the rest of this and it dried out immediately. So I think the minute you like pull that stopper out, it's done. <laughs> it's done. So I would recommend just keeping the stopper in and trying to get as much out as you can because after you pull the stopper out, game over. Like it's done. Next I have two liners, one from Colourpop and one from Tarte. The Colourpop liner was actually pretty decent. I like the price point. I like the um, juiciness of the actual tip. It is a felt tip liner which I do like better than a brush tip. Um, it makes it really easy to get a nice tight line on your upper lash line which I actually really like this. So I would definitely pick up the black liner because I did pick this up in brown. So I would love to try out the black liner to see if it's just as good. The Tarte liner, like it was an okay black liner. This was like a little sample or a point perk I got from Sephora. I wouldn't recommend purchasing it because I think you can get more affordable, better liners, specifically from Physicians Formula. I know that their liners are really good. Next, I have this brow mascara, basically a brow gel from Wet n Wild, and this is the Ultimate Brow Mascara. This is in the shade Nothing But Brew Net, and I'm actually like really angry at this. <laughs> I love the formula. This is such a good dupe for the ABH Clear Brow Gel but the shade is way too light and warm and brown for my brows. I want this to come in a black shade. They don't make this in black, which is a shame. Damn it. Okay, so my camera just died. I don't have any batteries done. It seems like everything is going wrong with this video that can go wrong. So I'm just gonna finish it up like real quick. So I literally have like one product left. So the ultimate brow, Let's not cover the camera, Monica. So the Ultimate Brow Mascara from Wet n Wild, I actually really like, but I hate that it doesn't, doesn't come in the right shade for me. If you've got blonde hair, if you've got really light brown hair, I think it'll work really well for you. But if you've got black hair like I do and you like dark brows, it's not gonna work. And last but not least, we have the Wet n Wild Mega Length Mascara. This is like the new formula, I believe. And I, I actually liked it. I heard a lot of rumors that this new formulation was a lot different than like the previous um, Mega Length Mascara, but it still works really well. 
I like it. I love it for my lower lash line particularly. I only wear it on my upper lashes if I do layer it with a different mascara. But on my lower lashes, you can use it like just by itself and it works really well and it doesn't transfer or smudge. All right, so we did it finally. Jesus, this video took way too long to film. Let me know down below what's the last empty product that you finished up and I cannot wait to see you guys in my next video. Bye.